Welcome to the Beamsville Church of Christ online ministry. This week, we'll hear a story of rescue from a boat accident from Ruth, a missionary our congregation supports in Papua New Guinea. Thank you to Dave, Don, and Janet for being part of the service. Please check out the description for a link to the video from Highland Church of Christ. The scripture reading this week is Mark 4, 35 to 41. There is some variability in the audio quality over the course of the service this week. We've added subtitling to our videos to help make things more intelligible. Transcripts are also available at beamsvillechurchofchrist.ca slash sermons. Happy birthday this week to Joe. Welcome. I guess there's no penalty for starting a few seconds early, only if we go over time. We have a birthday ID. It's not here this morning, but uh, the main calculator and has a birthday, and that's all we have for birthdays and anniversaries. We have one prayer request. Uh, Harold, a longtime member of Oma, has experienced a stroke and is recovering in a stable condition in the hospital, but is in for observation. So we remember him in our prayer. I'd like to have a word of prayer and then a brief reading and move on. Let's go to God. Heavenly Father, we, you know our hearts. We recognize your ongoing presence and thank you for your indwelling spirit. We pray for Harold and for several other people with health concerns that are on our hearts. Some are recovering, some are being restored to health, and we are thankful for that. We ask that we may comfort those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and ask for your strength, and to be empowered in Christ's name. It's in his name that we pray. I thought, one of the lines of being rescued from the sea, this may be an apt scripture. Psalms 89, verse 1, skip down to verse 5 through verse 9. I will sing to the Lord of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness to in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. O Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds us. Your rule over the surging sea, when the waves mount up, you still do. Today I just want to share few comments regarding communion. When I was first in Bible college in Troy, Ohio, I would travel over to Portland, Indiana, and preach there. And I had to learn the organization of how that church, what every church was a little bit different. But when it came to communion, I was used to being raised in a certain way where communion would be, you know, a dialogue. It would be maybe five minutes late. Sometimes it would be very, very late. And um, but other times it wasn't. But what I noticed was very brief comments. Um, when I first went to this particular church and ended up preaching there for a year, when it came to communion, it would be as simple as, as this. And it's not, not being negative. It's just the way it was. This is partaking of the body of Jesus, 
and the one I choose is let's go take it. And that, that's about it. But that's, that is it. It's all about Jesus. It's about his death for us. His shed blood for us. The sacrifice of sins. So I would ask you at this moment, if you would, if you would just bow your head for maybe 30 seconds or so and pray to yourself and then I'll finish with a prayer. Let's go ahead. We thank you, O oh Lord, for allowing us to be here to remember the love that you have given us, the sacrifice, the great, great sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We're so thankful that he's given up his body. Thank you that he shed his blood. We are not worthy, but you make us worthy because of him. In Christ's name, amen. May God bless you all this week. Mark 4, 35-41 That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I have... Part of Ruth's newsletter reprinted and edited, so it's not 10 pages long. And I also wrote some notes for myself, which I scrawled out, so I hope I can read them. <laughs> Anyhow, Ruth is a, a missionary in Papua New Guinea. She has been there 30 years. I was there 11 and a half. She's from Vineland, and she's supported by Beamsville and Tintin, and Fenwick is her main sponsor. And now first came, Ruth first came to Leigh, Papua New Guinea, in 1992 for a short term. She then went back to the Highland Street Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee, where Joe Cannon was there. He was the, the starter of the church in Papua New Guinea, and he was teaching young people how to become missionaries. Joan Rosabel's wife started their work in Papua New Guinea in 1971. Then Ruth returned to Ley around 1994. When I was there, there were several missionary families. Now Ruth is alone, just working with the national people. She's a very brave girl, I tell you. <laughs> Ruth has translated a couple of books from pidgin into, into the, from English into the pidgin language and has done a lot of printing work, including the uh, several uh, books and the song book, the Papua New Guinea song book. Ruth teaches the children and the women at the Melanesian Bible College, she also, which is in Lay. She also started a school up in the Highlands. Um, John Mesa is the leader or the principal of the Melanesian Bible College. He was in 
based in Canada, I came here quite a few years ago with another young man. One of Ruth's works, apart from her printing and teaching with children, is hosting guests that come from overseas, usually supporters. So she has supporters from Australia, the US, and Canada. And several times they have a national people coming from the Hammond Street Church because they're the main sponsors of the original work. So this year, the four people came, but one of them got delayed, so actually only three ended up. Okay, sometimes they are taken up to the highlands, which is a very rough road and a very rough area to go, but this time the plan was to go to Tali Island, which is just off around the corner from the coast of Cape, if you know, on the map. You might not see Tali Island on that little one. So this time they went to see the church there. There's quite a few Christians there. I actually went there myself one year, and I can tell you it was a very rough ride on a boat, a very small boat, and I was sure glad to get my feet on the ground. <laughs> okay, the three Highlands Street men and Jack, and then with his family, plus Ruth and her friend Miriam, Miriam lives with Ruth, were going to Tammy Island. All right, I'm going to read you part of the group's newsletter. A week ago, I saw the hand of God at work clear at any other time. I left with no other option than to write this report. Not to cause anxiety for anyone reading it, but in praise of God's protection and providence. Have you ever been so awed by something that you just don't know what to do with it eventually? I'm there right now. I have no doubt that every aspect of the following story both good and bad, are the result of prayer and God's plan to bring each of us closer to Him. So I was both of us, Ruth and Mary and Jack and a lot of his family. So this is several cases in New York, Amy mentioned their names, plus the three elders from the Methodist Church of Christ, Highland Church of Christ. At about 7 a.m. on Friday, July the 26th, the elder of us, including then from Highland Street Church of Christ, set off to Tommy Island. We were each looking forward to the trip and time with the Christians of Tommy. It took around four hours on calm seas to go to Malacasiga on the mainland to go to Finchhaven. Before heading out for the island, the trip across takes about 30 minutes to the island. When we left the mainland, we could see the island. But it didn't take long for that to change. We later learned that the islanders realized the gale was coming up from behind the island, but were late contacting someone on the mainland who would have told us to wait. As, as the duration of the trip approached and passed the 30 minute mark, we were anxiously searching for the group of small islands called that made up Tammy. It was raining heavily, and visibility had got to the point that we couldn't see the mainland either, and the sea was getting higher and higher, and then we swamped. I remember looking down as the water rushed in and saying to my friend Miring, are we sinking? Seems like a stupid question now. It was just so unbelievable at the time. I will never forget the look on Jab's face as the dinghy went under and all of our possessions started to float out. Among them was the large blue cooler that I had so carefully packed with our lunch and she had put a lot of stuff in that blue cooler. <laughs> Jab just kept saying, stay in the boat, don't leave the boat. Staying in, however, wasn't an option as it soon flipped. God had been at work in advance, however. Jab was only recently received this dinghy as a present. His older dinghy would not have survived. It is one of the latest available and has a built-in flotation device, meaning it wouldn't sink. For a while, we congregated around the submerged dinghy, dinghy many of us with life jackets, in a half-worn state, and some without. Those without 
had been late in grabbing them, and we watched the waves carry the brightly colored vests away. <laughs> At times, I miss the less complicated times before cell phones. Not that day. Between them, Jab was able to reach his son, Abraham, before Jab's phone sunk. At the time, we were uncertain that the message had gotten through. I had been wearing my billum, that's a string bag which I carry sometimes around my neck, and under one arm since Malasiga. I just forgot to take it off. And Miring was able to reach in and retire my phone. But by then, it had succumbed. Even though it was sealed in a locked bag, we just had to wait and pray. The large strip of plywood that usually sits in the bottom of the dinghy soon floated to the surface, and Chanel was able to use it as a floating device. As the outboard motor filled with water, it dragged the dinghy into a vertical position with the bow standing about three feet above the water level. And yes, I did think of the movie Titanic, but not of the violins. <laughs> Becky spent most of the time, that's Jab's wife, most of the time standing on the propeller attached to, and several, and with several of us clung to the boys at the front of the, and the rope that the anchor was, anchor was attached to. After it was all over, Becky realized that her trousers were torn up, and then she had a scratch down one leg. Thankfully, she hadn't started to bleed heavily. Those of us at the front of the boat remained unscathed. However, the large blue and gray tarpaulin that had been covering our cargo just wouldn't leave us alone. Each of us spent time getting untangled from it as it drifted around under the dinghy. You know what I mean by bleeding heavily, right, in the ocean? <laughs> Jocelyn, who is in grade four and who is very important without a life vest, <clears throat> excuse me, was, was floating off to my right, and I had to keep ragging her and pulling her back to the dinghy so she wouldn't drift off. She was tired and just didn't have it in her to hold onto the rope. I felt the same and put my right hand through the rope loop attached to the boys. Older sister Jasmine, grade nine, had been seasick before we left, before we reached Malasaiga and was soon exhausted. We truly feared for her life, and Mearing and I spent time holding her against the dinghy before Becky was able to swim to us and take her to the plywood. We have all admitted to having a great sense of peace throughout the ordeal. <clears throat> Eventually, all of the Bessa family were congregated around the plywood, while Mearing Randy and I remained with the dinghy. It really was surreal, floating there and very timeless. It seems like I had three things that kept me continuously occupied. Pulling Randy, that's one of the elders, back to the dinghy each time he started drifting. Getting the water out of my nose and throat again each time the bow was hit by a large wave and keeping my trousers on. Every few minutes, I had to reach down and retrieve them again around my, from around my ankles. I remember looking up while we were floating and seeing a turn flying ahead. That's a seagull looking down at us. We actually made eye contact. I didn't think much of it at the time, but it's also sometime, something that I will always remember. It turns out that the turn, along with a few of his friends, gave, us, gave help to us. They don't usually fly around humans, but they did that day, an answer to our prayers. About three hours after we had gone in, I heard a motor. I couldn't stop yelling, boat, boat, boat. By then, Jab and the rest were quite a distance from us, but I was determined that I'd make them hear above the noise of the waves. Our rescuers were a group of young fishermen who had simply followed the turns to what they thought was a school of fish. 
They were very shocked when they spotted the bow of our dinghy sticking up and saw the three of us holding on. We soon were lugged over the side by some very panicked young men. Two more dinghies soon followed. They were sent out to look for us. Jab had actually succeeded in getting the message across to Abraham, his son. One called Jab Kelly, cousin Willie, the village councillor and a fellow believer, who was on the mainland at Gagadu, with a disaster response team at the time, another of God's fingerprints. All the members came out of the ordeal relatively unscathed. We were met by the villagers as soon as we got to Tammy with dry clothes and lit fires to warm ourselves in the land. Our sense of deep gratitude has grown even more in the past couple of days upon hearing that another thing we also sat near us at the same time and that one of its passengers didn't make it. Remember the terms? God used them to be help to us. Then he also used dolphins. As the boats approached, they realized that there were several dolphins swimming around us continuously. None of us had seen them, so busy. We sank in a location that is notorious for sharks. Dolphins are natural enemies of sharks and will chase them away. God used them for our protection. He was taking care of us. After worship on Sunday, a police boat from the lane came to take us back to the mainland. Jack followed in his dinghy. As I prayed for his safety, someone said, Wow, look at that! There was a very large rainbow starting where Marasega is an ending at Tali Island. We were all awestruck and humbled by his love and care for us. With love from him and him. So, this is your beautiful newsletter. I want you to encourage you to continue to pray for him. He's doing a wonderful work out there. I was there 11 and a half years. She was there 30. So, she's needed to continue to pray. Let me see the video now. And if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to ask me and I'll try and answer them. Certainly, one more thing to be thankful for. We are thankful for your presence and participation this morning and for this inspiring story and for the safety and continued good works there. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the God of peace will be with you, is our prayer as we conclude. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening. The Beamsville Church of Christ meets at 4900 John Street, Beamsville, Ontario. Scripture quotations marked NIV, taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, NIV. Copyright 2011 by Biblica, Inc. Used by permission, all rights reserved worldwide. You can learn more about the congregation on our Facebook page or at beamsvillechurchofchrist.ca.